From dealing with her daughter's unplanned pregnancies to her husband's infidelities, Ruth Graham knows about tough times, and she knows about how to get through them. Unpleasant circumstances like layoffs, relationship troubles, and the threat of a flu epidemic can cause stress and anxiety. Instead of worrying, Ruth Graham says there's more to life than a fear of the unknown. In her new book, Fear Not Tomorrow, God is Already There, Ruth reminds us how to fight fear by focusing on God instead of our anxiety. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, the author of the new book, Fear Not Tomorrow, God is Already There. Ruth Graham, it is wonderful Thank to see you, you again. Thank you, It's great to be back. You have gone through some real struggles. <laughs> I mean, you know, most of us don't know each other's struggles behind the scenes, but you have been kind enough to share yours to encourage all of us. But talk about some of the difficulties that God's walked you through. Well, I think God has given me a unique voice in my family mm -hmm. because of some of the stuff I've been through with the uh, infidelities and the depression that followed the divorce. And then knowing that my oldest child was suffering with an eating disorder and my son was dabbling in drugs and my third child came to me and said, you know, I think I'm pregnant. And we went through that. We released the baby for adoption. And um, then she did it again. But she decided to parent this little boy. And, and more recently, Terry, I got a phone call from her. And she was pregnant. She's, uh, she got married and, and already had a year and a half year old. And um, she called me and she said, Mom, I'm going into labor. And I said, but it was a little early. I said, but call me. Um, and that night she didn't call me. And the I woke up and I said, well, the baby obviously didn't come. And so I uh, went on to my walk and got a call from my oldest daughter and said, have you talked to Windsor? And I said, no, but apparently the baby didn't come. She said, yes, it has. You need to call her now. Mm. And the baby had come early um, with multiple problems. Oh, and um, the baby has... Uh, esophageal atresia, which means the stomach and the esophagus don't meet. And that was in August, and she is, he is still in the hospital and will have surgery next week. So I know what it is to face yeah. uncertain times. Yeah. And when you are driving up the highway to go see your child, and every mile the phone would ring and the information got worse. And mm. I thought, I don't know what I'm going to find when I get there. And... Um, I, didn't ha I couldn't read my Bible because I was driving. The, the praise music was just sort of not registering. Swirling around you, And yes. um, in the back of my book, I have an ABC praise list, a character characteristics, characteristics of God with ABCs. And that's what I pulled in my mind is, all right, God's almighty. God is bountiful. He's beautiful. He is compassionate. He's caring. He's a deliverer. Yeah. He is eternal. He is faithful. And I go through all the ABCs and you change your focus from the circumstance to who God is. Yes. And that's when we can let go of the fear. And you know, you're so right about what you say. It's so hard when you're, when your your internal mm -hmm. self is swirling and you try to get into the mode of praise but sometimes when you're in distress it's very difficult to get there focusing on god is the key one of the things he also is he's there that's and right. that's what you talk about i love the title fear not tomorrow god's already there yes. talk about that well the title actually came from a little plaque that hung over my mother's Bible study desk for years. I can't remember a time it wasn't there. And when I was going through a difficult time with one of my children, she pulled it off the, the wall and sent it to me. And now wow. it hangs in my office. And when I got it, I thought, you know, is that a platitude? <laughs> Fear not tomorrow. God is already there. Yes. Is he really there? Yeah. What's he like? Is he angry? Is he harsh? Is he just waiting to get me? Um, so I wanted to delve into the scriptures to find out the character of God through the person of Jesus Christ. Well, and you know, I think one of the other things people struggle with, Ruth, Ruth, and you talk about the importance of this, is when things don't look like they're fair, mm -hmm. and when they're not going your way, and when disaster happens, when you're about to lose someone that you love, how do you trust God mm -hmm. in the midst of that? Mm -hmm. How did you come to an answer for yourself? Well, it's knowing who He is, and we have to build a track record, and we can begin today. If you don't yeah. know Him, you can begin today with a track yes. record, and, and keeping track of what he's done in your life. And I have to write it down, otherwise I'll forget. But the, one of the, God's big gripes with the Israelites was that they didn't remember. And they would get into trouble somewhere, and he said, but don't you remember I delivered you? And they'd 
grumble because they didn't have food. Don't you remember I delivered you? And so over and over again, they would forget. And I'm the same way. I face a new problem and I get all upset and I get anxious and worried. And he wants to remind me, don't you remember what I did back here? And uh, so that's how I focus on God and, and, and keep a track record with him. And of course, you, you do that through the scripture, through prayer, through friends. Yes. You know, other people help keep us on track and yeah. help us to remember. And it's very important to have Christian friends surround us. You're not the only one in your family that's struggled, though. I know your sister Gigi's gone through a difficult time. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, first of all, is it tough being Billy Graham's kids? <laughs> You know, our, we are so blessed to have a wonderful father yes. whom we really love. And I'm so excited because he's trying to get better so that he can preach one more time. <laughs> he says he really has, God has put it on his heart to preach one more time. He God has a message that he him. wants to deliver. And so I'm praying that God's going to strengthen him. And I would ask your viewers yes. to pray that God will strengthen him. We he can do that. We would love to hear from yeah. him one yeah. more time. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, you know, they never put pressure on us because we were Billy Graham's kids. They just reminded us that we were representatives of Jesus and their for to act in a way that would honor him. Well, do you as a family s encourage and support each other? I mean, as brothers and sisters, you all know what it's like to, f to be in that That's pressure right. cooker, that, you know, bubble that everybody's watching. That's right. Well, you know, we're all so busy and we're all going in so many different directions. It's hard for us all to get together. I'm sure. Fortunately, just last week, I got Franklin's email. So, <laughs> so now he's going to hear from me. But um, and it's, I particularly when my nephew was going through a difficult time recently yeah. in Florida with the Coral yes. Ridge Presbyterian Church. And I just emailed him to just let him know that I was loving him and praying for him. But, you know, if it weren't for email, we probably wouldn't stay in touch like we do. Yeah. Well, you have a ministry of your own called Ruth Graham and Friends, and I'm sure that's, there's a lot of encouragement in that ministry. There really is. I wanted to be able to, I believe in the church, and I wanted to be able to come alongside of the church and equip the yeah. church to deal with the messy part of life. Yeah. Churches do well with grief and family issues and, and health issues, but they don't do well with pornography or addictions or depression or, or abuse or divorce. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, if you were addicted to pornography, would you want to go tell somebody at the church? That would be no. a no. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to equip the church, yes. the leadership in the church, because they don't have time. Yeah. Equip the laity, the, you know, to train them yeah. so that it relieves some of the burden from the pastor. Oh, Ruth, it's so important in the hour that we live in. This is the moment for the church to rise and shine, That's and we right. need to be ready to That's do that. Right. I love your book. I love your candor in everything. I want to mention to all of you, this is a book well worth reading. Fear Not Tomorrow, God is already there, trusting him in uncertain times. What a message for each and every one of us. It's available nationwide. Thank you so Thank much. You it's so always much, a treat to Great have to you see here. You. Thanks. Thanks. You too.